This show will absolutely change your life. And why? Gary Spivey's been radio's number one psychic for over 20 years. The one-of-a-kind show, Tapping In with Gary Spivey, showcases all his spiritual gifts and talents, taking you on a spiritual journey, broadcasting weekly from wherever he is in the world. Welcome to Tapping In with Gary Spivey. Hi guys, welcome to Tapping In with Gary Spivey. This is the show that gives you spiritual solutions to your real life problems. And I'm here with you, Gary Spivey, uh, my uh, co-host, Jason Marty. Hey guys. Hey, there we are. And uh, Travis Mead, what's up? What's going on? Hey, we're outside and I mean, we're with nature. This is our week of nature. We're hanging out and there's a lot of energy vortexes here in beautiful Ojai, California. And we're going to take you with us on all of our journeys. And we're up in the mountains. We're doing hikes. I'm hiking. Yeah, right? Me? Hiking? Well, if I can hike, you can come with us. And so we're going to have a great time and I'm going to show you a lot of meditations that will help you wherever you are. You can do these meditations at home and you can actually tap into these energy vortexes that have known, they're actually, Ojai, California is known uh, for its amazing energy vortexes all over the world. Almost every uh, every spiritual person on earth will make some sort of a pilgrimage to Ojai, and even a lot of these guys have places here, and a lot of, a lot of this just a, a sort of a known thing in the spiritual community. And so I'm going to take you with me, I'm going to show you a lot of great things this week, and there's some meditations you're going to want to learn how to do so you can always uh, continue to do them and bring in the light so you have a heaven on earth. And so if you want to call me up, you can call me at 1-800-827-GARY, 1-800-TAP-GARY, 1-800-TAP-GARY. You can remember that, 1-800-T-A-P-G-A-R-Y. Or you can also go, of course, to GarySpivey.com, and you'll uh, explain all this. You're better at this than me. Oh, yeah, right at GarySpivey.com, there's a question box that you can fill in right out the front page. And uh, you can also find him on Facebook at uh, Facebook.com forward slash GarySpivey, on Twitter.com at Gary Spivey and on Instagram at Gary Spivey. And you can send us a smoke signal because we are outside and we're here in Ojai, right? Do you read smoke signals, Travis, right? I'm not very good at that. Okay, I'm better than you. So let's take a call. Let's take a call. So we got a question from Amber in San Diego. She writes in and says, my husband feels like he has a demon. Right. Awful thoughts pop in his head all the time. He's usually good at rationalizing them, but lately they're really bringing him up and down. He said he would never act on the thoughts. Is there a way to help him? There is a way to help him. And this is something that's a very common question that, that I get asked uh, for the last, oh, I don't know, 150 years. Uh, and, and people are asking me this question uh, about these different types of uh, dark energies that can make you have negative thoughts. What makes a person, a human being, have such negative thoughts? Well, these negative thoughts really do occur. And they occur in people that you would never think they would occur in. And uh, so usually a person's strong enough to not act out on these negative thoughts. However, if you notice, you'll have all kinds of things in the news all at one time where you'll, you'll have a mass murder here, crazy shooting there, something horrible happened, and, and it's all over the news, you know, from place to place. And so this is a certain type of dark entity that can attack human beings. And so, but I, I do see this particular demon around Amber's, uh, Amber's spouse, and so I can help her. So... So in the news, when someone says that they hear voices in their head, they're not crazy. They're really hearing. They're hearing voices in their head. I mean, are they crazy? I guess, you know, what's crazy? And so, but, but, uh, yes, they're hearing voices in their head. And many, many times, especially these days, the dimensions are bleeding over. In other words, the spiritual dimensions are bleeding over into the physical dimensions. And this is what is, is, uh, is commonly known as a disorder. And, and so people either have uh, multiple personality disorder, right, or, they, or they'll have some sort of a disorder, schizophrenia, something going on. And it's really just a dark energy because when I get rid of the dark energy, they get better most of the time. Hi, Amber. This is Jason with The Gary Spivey Show. Hi. Hi. So we have Gary on the line ready uh, to answer your question about your husband being saddened by demons. Okay. Amber, it's Gary. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad to talk to you. And so now anyway, I, I was really taken by your email where you were explaining that your husband is actually hearing voices in his head. Yeah, he's. it's something that, you know, he shared with me years ago. We've been married for almost 15 years and he shared it with me 15 years ago. Okay. Lately, I think he says it's getting worse. Right. 
Um, he's able to maintain it, but it, he feels like it tells him to do things. He actually, for the first time, used the word he feels like he has a demon. Good. And he doesn't even listen to your show, so he doesn't, I mean, that word, it was interesting that he used it, because I don't know that he's ever heard one of your broadcasts. Right. I have, so it really resonated with me. When I look at him, he's yeah. got he's got several demons with him. Okay, now he has mm-hmm. the he has the I can't do anything right demon. Okay, and so yeah. uh, does he feel like sometimes? Do you notice that in his demeanor that he acts like he can't do anything right, or he sort of feels that way sometimes? Yeah. Okay, because when I look, I want to show you something. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you how to get rid of his demons. How's that? I would love that. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Ask your angel. Say the word angel. Angel. Okay. Now say the word God. God. Okay. Say so give me a spiritual gift to get rid of my husband's demons give me a spiritual gift to get rid of my husband's demons okay now raise your hand up in the air raise your hand up in the air now i saw you get a sword so how your hand got warm all over yeah you feel warm all over that's crazy right it is yeah and so now move it from side to side so you'll be aware of it now the, the actually this particular spiritual gift gives you the ability to see his demon now and if you close your eyes and imagine your husband and look behind him you see an ugly demon slapping him on the back of the head one side to the other. See that thing? Now, yeah. now just take your sword and whack it. There you go. Now it exploded in light and your hand got real hot. Feel your hand get hot? It's hot and cold. That makes sense to me. Okay, but you can feel it. It's a weird feeling. Feel how warm? Yes. Dif- different feeling. And so you just killed the demon that was making him really crazy. You know, kind of going crazy in his head. And that particular demon will tell him things uh, to make him insecure. And so, and then tell him things to act out. And so you got rid of his demon. Uh, and so I see him looking very, very bright. And if you notice, your face is feeling sort of warm and your feet. Feel that? Yes. My back and everything is warm. Okay. Well, see so you, that's the reason. You see, because you got rid of the demon standing behind your husband you're and, and close to his back and you're empathing what he's feeling. Wherever he is right now, he feels real warm. Okay. He probably wonders, what's going on with me? But you'll notice now he'll start to feel better. Uh, he'll be much calmer. He'll sleep better. I think all in all, you'll find that the voices will go away that he had uh, telling him things. And what, what were some of the things they would, tell, they would tell him to do? Did he share that with you? Uh, um, some of it, they were like bad things. Mainly things like if I just turn the steering wheel right now, I will, and, and then just, you know, in the car and the devastation that it would cause. It was kind of actions. Yeah, get the old lady walking across the street, 10 points, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. Like paper boy? Yeah, yeah. And so it's really funny. Travis had one of these demons for a little while, and he, you know, I would be walking down the stairway. I can hear demons or, or angels. And so I turned around and looked back at Travis. I said, I thought about just pushing him. Yeah, he had some voice in his head that said, push him down the steps. <laughs> Right. And I'm like, and so, but we, we, you know, we're able to hear this. I'm able to hear this. And so, but but remember you had that, Yeah, yeah. you had that same thing. So, so uh, a lot of times people really do have something that's telling them a negative thing to do. I hear this all the time in kids. I really do. This is very prevalent in children and it's very sad what these kids go through, but you can actually use your spiritual gift. That's yours to keep. You can use it for forever and ever. You should read my book. It's called secrets from God, your keys to heaven. And uh, you can get it of course at GarySpivey.com. And this is an important book for you to read because it'll explain to you all the steps on how to get rid of dark energies. It's like the how-to, okay? Okay. And so now I'm going to look at you. You have obsessive compulsive demons. I just got rid of those. Sometimes you get things in your head and you can't turn loose of them. Make sense? Very true. Yeah. And so I just got rid of those. Notice your feet are warm. Your head is light. There we go. And I see tons and tons of light coming into you. You guys are really good people, though. I got a new meditation that's actually on this very, very, very show. You'll find that this will really help you. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. This gal sent in an email, and, and I found this to be a very interesting one. And so I was sort of like taken by this. And, and a lot of times I, I get really, really hundreds of emails every week. And this was something that really got my attention. So read the email. Tell us what's up. All right, Gary, we have Crystal from Minneapolis, Minnesota. She says, the number is 831. Follow me everywhere. Okay. I- a lot of people have this going on. This is not a rare question. The number 831? Not the number 831, but they'll have numbers, and numbers do mean things. And, of course, I'm not a numerologist, but I can usually interpret what this means for this individual. A lot of times people see one, 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 like one, they see ones. I see that all the time. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah, and that's a very common, that's probably the most common thing. So if you see 1111 or 111 or 11, whatever the ones are, this just means we're all one. 
you know, and so that's that's what that means. And this is, or it's time to be one. And usually this can be a sign when something is happening around you and you, you happen to look at your phone and it's 1111. You go, oh, OK, that means, you know, this will work. You're one. You're one with the universe. Uh, you're one with yourself. You're one with heaven. You're one with God. You're one with the, per- the person that's in your face. Uh, and so this is this is important to be one. The most important thing today. All right. She says, I look at the clock almost every day at 831. I'll buy turkey and the price will be 831. I'll be driving behind a car, and the plates will say 831. That's a little spooky, though, right? That's, that's what do you weird. think? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> you think that's weird? That's kind of weird, right? 831. Yeah. I've never heard 831. It's like some invisible's falling you or something. Right, 831. Yeah. Okay. 830 crazy. No, I'm just kidding. No. I see demons, angels, hear voices. Yeah, who's crazy here? She says it happens to pop up a lot when she's stressing out about something. Oh. I'm wondering if it's something who has passed trying to communicate with me or just a silly past thing going on trying to trick me. Help me. It's driving me crazy. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have her on the line? Yeah, we, we have uh, Crystal on the line right now. Hey, Crystal. It's Gary. How are you? Good. Good. And you had uh, you had a very interesting uh, question that you emailed to us. You're always seeing the numbers 831. I am. Yeah. And so tell me about that. Tell me when you see them. Tell me what you're feeling when you see this. It almost happens on a daily basis. And now let me just look and see what, what I'm seeing, okay? Here's how I interpret it. Um, the the number eight uh, is infinity, like the infinity sign. Okay. Yeah. This means uh, infinite possibilities. Even the name of my boat is infinity. Uh, the infinity uh, means you know it connects the universe, and it's a universal flow of energy. And so, if you have the energy, the infinity energy. Uh, going on that means you, you you're somewhat magical and when i look at you do you ever get psychic dreams yeah i guess i would say that um, yeah you see things or you sometimes i feel like I'll, I'll be like recently i was having a massage and i felt like i was having like an outer body experience like vision right and it really freaked me out but i felt really at peace yeah well see you know that's normal so you were relaxed you're calm and you were allowing. Uh, and when I look at you, you're a little bit sometimes hung up in the energy of control. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you're always control freak a little bit, aren't we all? What happens is uh, it, it took me forever to learn how to allow. With allowing, uh, it really does uh, create your allow your ma- allow your magic, allow your infinity energy to, to come into your body. But as I see it, you're very psychic and you have the energy of infinity already turned on. So that's what the eight is. And the three, there's three people in your world and that you're one with. And the one means oneness. And so who are your three people that are close? What does that three number three mean as it relates to people? Wow. Well, um, I suppose my husband and my daughter and my mom. Okay. And those are your three people. Sure. Yeah. And so but that's what it amounts to. And so this is your, your eight is your infinity energy. And you have this infinity, uh, which is like uh, infinite love, infinite possibilities, um, and infinite even awareness with these three people, your husband, your daughter, and your mom. You have one child? I do. I have one um, 18 month old and I have actually one on the way. Oh, one on the way. Oh, my God. Well, here's here's what you're going to have going on. Your, your number 831 is going to change into 841. Oh. <laughs> okay. That would be amazing. Yeah, that's what's happening with you, and that's what your 831 means. Jen, I feel like you got one more question. What's your other question? I had my grandpa pass away maybe five years ago, and he was a really big male influence on my life. Right. Krista, what was your grandfather's name? <laughs> His name was Don. Can you mm. tap into Don? He tells me his heaven is great. Uh, he's happy. He shows me walking around outside. He, he loved outside, right? Yes. Yeah, and, he was a farmer. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And so, yeah. and so, but I see him all outside running around, having a ball. He says, you know, I'm in my heaven. And he says, I'm happy. I'm talking to my girl. And he says, he calls you his girl. And so he's very aware of your child. Uh, he's picked your, uh, your child for you. And so your next one. And so uh, he, he's telling me that, that he had a little something to do with that. He's, you know, he's, that's how he speaks. I had a little something to do with that. Uh, oh, that's amazing. He said, I even love your, he calls him your old man. <laughs> so <laughs> I love your old man. Your grandfather spoke like that though, right? That's how he talked. Yeah. He's, uh, he shows me a walking stick. What does a walking stick mean? But one time uh, he got like one of those fake walking sticks as a, as a joke, you know, that has the rear view mirror and the, the horn and stuff. I think it was when he turned 70 or something. Oh, okay. He's making a joke with that. He's shaking the walking stick at you. I mean, he's being funny. <laughs> he would just play little games with you all the time, I think. It makes sense? Yeah. 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 He says he loves you a lot. And so good luck with everything and, and watch your numbers turn to 841. Okay. Okay.
Thank all right. you. All right, Annie. Good luck with the baby. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you for being part of Tapping with Gary Spivey. You have a great evening. Thanks, you too. She's great. Yeah, that was good. Hey, guys, don't go anywhere. Tapping in with Gary Spivey will be right back after this short message. Hey, guys, if you want a private reading with me in person, just me and you, you can call me up at 800-827-GARY and schedule some time, and I'll talk to you about all your problems. Now, back to Tapping in with Gary Spivey. How, how could people... It, uh, interpret that on their own because that happens to everybody all the time. Well, I got a I, bunch of friends that happens to family members. Different numbers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you have to kind of realize, you know, what does the number mean to you? I've found sort of like just by reading, what does this mean to this person? A lot of times I can, I can find out like she had three people she really loved, uh, her husband, her mother, her baby, and then she's got a new baby coming. I you thought see. that was a, an amazing answer. wasn't really like I came up with it. I simply asked her, Angel, what does this mean? Because I did feel like this was an angelically led message. Uh-huh. And so that's uh, that's what I saw. And you run all over the country teaching other people how to do what you do. So I do. Yeah, I, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of times I do spiritual retreats in beautiful places like uh, here in Ojai, California. I'm doing a great retreat coming up in June in North Carolina. You guys got to show up. This is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I do uh, uh, workshops. I do workshops all over. And and I teach other people how to tap in to their spiritual gifts and their spiritual abilities. And uh, later in the show today, I'm taking you way up in the uh, National Forest to this energy vortex. For everyone that doesn't know, give us just a a real quick minute background on Ojai, California, the the reason that this place is so special, because there's a lot of special places in the world, but what makes Ojai so special? Uh, The nature here in beautiful Ojai is a, is incredible you have these great energy vortexes and all the mountain ranges uh, in the world run north and south now this is a a very special mountain range that runs east and west and Ojai uh, is one of those mountain ranges and you have the beautiful Topa Topa Mountains you have the summit Uh, I'll show you a picture of that we'll go to that shot right now and uh, this is this is what Ojai has it has the pink moment uh, which is this beautiful glow that comes over the valley every evening about sunset And this is really the sun sort of bouncing off the Pacific Ocean, which is right over the mountain range on the other side. So this energy here in Ojai had always has been known for its spiritual attributes. The Topa Topa Indians uh, are buried right here. The largest Indian burial ground in uh, Southern California is right here in the upper valley of Ojai. And these Native Americans are buried uh, about four feet deep, sitting upright, facing the Topa Topa Summit. And this energy here, this was like the happy hunting ground. This is the spiritual place where they would come even to uh, uh, to be buried, to pass away, and to go to heaven. I've learned so many things by being here in Ojai. I've lived here for many, many years, and uh, I learned how to see heaven. I learned how to interpret the different dimensions, and I don't know if I would have been able to learn as much as I learned if I didn't live here in Ojai for quite some time and uh, be so in touch with the Native American spirit, the Native American energies, and if I didn't meet a guy named Grandfather, who was a 95-year-old shaman uh, that came to me, and then later we became friends. One of the coolest spiritual gifts that I've gotten lately uh, has been a ball of pearly white energy. Now, if you notice, uh, there's a ball of pearly white energy right here. It looks like an orb on my hand, if you see this. Now, this is kind of crazy because this is actually a piece of dust or something. On That's the, the coolest piece of dust I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, on the camera lens. And so this particular thing right here uh, is uh, to remind me to tell you guys about this spiritual gift that looks like this. We didn't plan it this way. Uh, Uh, It just happened. But since it's here, we're going to talk about it. And this is really important. Let me show you this meditation. I want you guys to just close your eyes, look up, and there's a beautiful gift of protection that can protect you and help you keep all the dark energies away from you. And you want to say, God, give me a spiritual gift of the pearly white ball of light. And it looks like that thing that showed up on my screen right there. And so you want to say, God, angels, angels, God, Please give me the spiritual gift of a pearly white ball of energy to help me protect myself. And this is a protection energy that usually when it comes to you, it usually comes to the center of your head, which is, let's see, let me get right there. Okay. It'll expand from there into all of your dimensions and it'll actually go all the way around your body. 
anyway, so that's, that's a really cool spiritual gift that you can get. And many times spiritual gifts will come in the form of orbs and there'll be different color orbs. You can ask for a ball of healing energy and you'll imagine a, a rainbow orb that'll show up. Yeah. yeah. When you showed us how to do that, I mean, uh, myself, I got really high off that one gift, that yeah. pearly white gift. Yeah, That yeah. was amazing. Right. Yeah. So anytime I get spiritual gifts, when I meditate, I always try to give them to all you guys. I tell you about them. I explain how you get a spiritual gift. You simply look up, imagine the spiral of light going clockwise around your head. Just say, angel, God, please give me my spiritual gifts today. And you really want to ask for a spiritual gift every day of your life. So when they wake up, they should ask for their spiritual oh, yeah. gift that will get them through the day. Absolutely. Every day they need a new spiritual gift. Well, you may not you day. may not always need a brand new spiritual gift. You might need to be reminded of a gift you already have, but you should always ask for your gifts every day because usually there is a different thing that you go through every day. If you meditate for a little bit in the morning and allow your gifts to come to you, you're going to have a great day. That's how it works. I think this would be probably really interesting for uh, our viewers. What do you, what's your morning routine like, Gary? How okay. do you, how do you get, how does Gary Spivey start his day? Okay, well, I wake up, you know, every day I wake up and the first thing I see is heaven. I really do. And I, I look up, I see heaven. Are your eyes closed, shut? Oh. Usually they're closed. You know, I wake up, I might open my eyes, but I, then I look and I see heaven and uh, I see angels. I can see God. I mean, I really see all this. And, and uh, you know, sometimes I see loved ones on the other side. Uh, my mother's past, my father. Sometimes I'll see my mom. Uh, but I can actually see, um, you know, heaven and I see everything in heaven. And, and uh, but I, I, a lot of times I'll wake up and I, I've seen in the last couple of years, I'll open my eyes and, and, uh, and then shut them and I'll open them and I'll shut them. And I may see my angels standing around in the room with me, or I could even see God. And so, I simply ask God to give me my spiritual gifts and to make me aware of what it is I need to do today for him. And that's what I always try to do. Yeah. I mean, the morning's a good time because you're in a almost a meditative state. You're in some well, you different are. state of mind. You well, know? you are. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of like you, you uh, are in this alpha state. An alpha state is sort of in between uh, asleep and awake. So the easiest time to really see clearly uh, is when you're first waking up or sort of right when you're going to sleep. But the only problem is when you're just going to sleep, you'll go on to sleep and you won't be able to see everything. You'll miss it because you went to sleep. But when you're just waking up, a lot of times this is really a good time to meditate because you'll be able to see things the clearest. Okay, so for those people that are caught in the hustle and bustle and they don't have a lot of time, how do you, they, you know, there's, it's just five minutes work a day. Well, it, it works day? for different people. I, I recommend, you know, meditate at least 15 minutes a day. Um, I meditate, um, sometimes all day. I mean, there could be times where, uh, my angels tell me to meditate, uh, bring in light, uh, project light to the world, uh, clear the world, you know, whatever, whatever I'm going through. I mean, it could be, um, um, it could be like that. Uh, but I rep I recommend, um, maybe 15 minutes a day at least, uh, but you can meditate while you're walking to the bus. You can meditate uh, really doing anything. It's not always a good idea to meditate and drive, but you can. Uh, but you can, certainly can meditate, uh, you know, pretty easy. Once you get used to it, you'll get to where you can hear your angels clearly. And that's really what it amounts to is when you meditate, you go up into a higher uh, energy space and you're able to clear the dark energies. So you can listen to your angels and listen to what they tell you to do. If you follow what your angels tell you to do, you'll never go wrong. We'll be right back right here on Tapping In with Gary Spivey. A meditation journey in nature with Gary Spivey. Wow. You know, what's really great is, is God put these rocks here just for us to uh, enjoy. They look heavy. This is a great time. When you walk out here, you have an amazing sense of clarity. Uh, your head gets just really, really clear, and you're not hearing anything. Listen to this. I can barely hear the grass touching each other as the wind blows through. Wow, this is neat. Great vibes. There's a lot of energy vortexes here in Ojai, and, and uh, the vibration here is like gold. When I close my eyes, I see rivers of gold, and so I just see lots and lots of gold coming down. And so, uh, and then I heard an angel say, this is a river of gold. And so, nice. 
Here, I want you guys to feel this. Check it out. Anyway, there, feel it? Pretty good. That felt good. True holy water flows through holy places. And so, that's nice. Sometimes when you're out here in Southern California, beautiful Ojai, uh, and you're really out in nature, we're up this nature trail a couple of miles, and so we're way back in the National Forest. This is, a, this is an amazing vibe. And back here, uh, you can feel the Shumash Indians. And if you close your eyes and imagine a Native American sitting out here around the rocks and around the water, and just allow that energy to, to go through your body, you're gonna find an amazing vibration of healing. The, the energy itself will actually be sort of a rainbow colored energy. And uh, this rainbow colored energy uh, is like all the colors of the rainbow and it just lets light in and just heals you. So take a moment uh, and just get healed. The biggest thing with meditating is to simply allow. It's a beautiful thing. See a rainbow vortex going in a spiral direction around the top of your head right now. And in this rainbow energy, going clockwise, if you're looking down at the top of your head from the sky, uh, you're gonna feel a beautiful healing energy that'll just overtake you. Close your eyes and imagine you're here with me. If you imagine you're here with me, uh, you'll be here. If you enjoyed this meditation, make sure you pre-sign up for Gary Spivey's up-and-coming private library, Coming Soon, Spiritual Solutions to Your Real-Life Problems. Only $9.95 a month. There you'll have exclusive access to all the archive video podcasts to watch whenever you want. The ability to download the audio to your phone or iPod. Gary Spivey's daily spiritual secrets, multiple weekly and video audio meditations, access to join Gary's weekly mass energy clearing. All of you can learn to meditate and clear your energy just like Gary. Because the spiritual dimensions are changing around so fast these days, it's become almost impossible to put all the current information in just one book. That's why Gary created a new online book exclusive to his private library. It's called Chapters from God, a spiritual book that never ends. This is a new way that Gary and co-author of Gary's first book, Secrets from God, Your Keys to Heaven, Dean Heimel, feel they can get you the most current information, releasing one to two new chapters every month. You'll also get special discounts to all Gary's events around the country. This is just some of the many things that will be available to you in Gary's constantly growing private library. Now, back to tapping in with Gary Spivey. We're talking about hearing voices in your head. And while a lot of people think they're crazy if uh, they hear voices in their head, uh, I've, uh, you know, talked to everybody into believing it's okay to hear voices in your head because I hear voices in my head all the time. And, uh, but however, I listen to those voices and I even tell other people what I'm hearing and it makes sense to them. They go, wow, how did you know that? That's amazing. And so uh, a lot of times you can listen to voices in your head, uh, but understand there's different channels you can be on. You can be on the angel channel, which means you're going to hear angels or hear God. Or you can be on the demon channel, which means you may hear some voices and you may not want to hear what they have to talk about. So you have to be aware of that and you have to really know how to meditate. Most important thing, raise your vibration so you're always on the angel channel. So I found this to be really interesting. We got an email from someone who was talking about their son, right? Yeah, this little kid's uh, um, hearing voices, and he's actually like doing what they say. Oh, uh, and that's just, tough. Yeah. A lot of times, I mean, this is very, very common um, for me to get. I probably get two or three of these phone calls every week on some radio show somewhere in America, or I, I get this in private readings or seminars or workshops. And, and uh, uh, it's very common for spiritually gifted children. They can um, hear angels, they can see angels, they can hear demons, and they can also see demons. And so you have to teach your spiritually gifted children uh, really what channel to, to listen to. So let's talk to her. She writes in, she says, Gary, I need your help. My seven-year-old says he hears voices telling him to hurt other children. He says he tries to ignore them. Uh, ignore the voices, but he's compelled to do hurtful things like punching, kicking, spitting, pulling hair. He says he likes this. He likes uh, these other children. 
but right. he just can't help it. I have okay. that same thing. I'm not lying. Sometimes I really will think I should just spit in this person's face, and I have no idea. You've told me that before. I, I really think that's a common thing. I you, think you've told me that before. I mean, I'm not you, I'm never, I can't I'm not imagine. Just, I can't imagine you spitting in someone's face. But now you did this as a kid. Did you ever spit in somebody's face? No. I mean, I think this is more of something that happens as an adult. Like I'll be talking to someone that is very important. I really need to be paying And you'll just hear spit in I'll their hear face? spit in their face. You're nuts. And I'm thinking, what? He's crazy. No. no, but no that happens to me, too, honestly. Not, uh, you'll hear that. I'll you're be trying to too. talk to somebody like No, you guys aren't crazy. Yeah. See, but you'll hear these negative voices. And so you, when, you, when you hear these things, thank God you don't do it. But, uh, but what happens is you'll, you'll hear these things, and you have to go to a higher vibration, clear your energy, and then you won't have those negative energies telling you these things. Because these days, remember... The spiritual dimensions are getting thinner and thinner and thinner to where there's almost no difference between spiritual and physical. And that's what's occurring here on the planet Earth. The planet Earth is really turning into um, a, a very spiritual place where everything's bleeding into, uh, each dimension's bleeding into the other one. And that's what makes yeah. this show special because it is... Tapping In with Gary Spivey is a show that gives you spiritual solutions to your real life problems i think so let's try to get rid of these uh these voices for her okay not let's you're on it's you buddy <laughs> yeah <laughs> hi kathy this is jason with the tapping in with gary spivey show yes hi how are you great thanks we got gary here on the line hey oh, kathy hi, gary. hey kathy how are you i'm good good Thank you. you got a, a, an issue with your son yes he hears voices yeah so long story short um it just kind of all of a sudden started happening. Right. He started hearing uh, voices to um, do, be really aggressive to other kids. Right. Uh, like how, school. like what kind of aggression? What would he do? Um, he punched a little girl in okay. her stomach, oh, kicked no. her, pulled her hair, right. and spit at her in her face. Okay. He did that several times. It was, and was asked to kind of stop, and he couldn't. He said he was almost compelled to do that. And he's usually a love bug, right? Yes. That is the strangest thing. He is yeah. usually, he's the most loving, caring, he's yeah. my most affectionate child. Yeah, that's what I see. I can see a demon and dark energy that makes uh, this occur. And so let me get rid of it. I'm just pulling this out of him and away from him. He also, this particular demon will hang out in his room. Does he get afraid of his room? He does a, a little bit. He likes to have it really dark in there, Right. but he does have these vivid dreams. Right, okay. Well, I just got rid of the, a bunch of dark energies. He had quite a few dark energies. Sometimes he'll also obsess on things. He's, he had a few obsessive compulsive demons uh, that will make him obsess. He'll get ho something hung in his head and he can't turn loose of it. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. And he'll go on and on and on and on and on until you solve it, whatever it is. And, yes. and so, uh, but uh, those are, I got rid of, he had obsessive compulsive demons. Notice how your feet are really, really warm. Yeah, yes. They were, they were chilly earlier, I just noticed, but now they're really warm. Yeah, okay. And so uh, that's because you're empathing what I did with him. He actually had a demon that was inside of his body. You can have a demon that's outside of your body, and you can also have a demon that is inside of your body. Now, the demon that I got rid of was a certain type of demon that was on the back of his uh, head and the back of his back. Notice how your back is warm now and the back of your head a little warm. Feel that? Yes. This is a particular demon that it keeps him from ever having a best friend and so yes. and so the greatest kid in the world but as soon as uh someone will will show up in his life uh that he likes and he can be best friends with he'll be really sweet and reel him in with his wit and his charm and his good looks you know and and then the next thing you know when they get too close in the demon will reach around and and say the craziest perfect thing at the right time to emotionally gut the person have you ever noticed that I have. That's not really him speaking. It's that particular demon. And and this is a demon that's a one-shotter. This is one time I get rid of it, it's gone. That would be wonderful. You will notice a different child. This is a demon that he was born with. This only happens with the brightest of light kids. Uh, okay. These kids are born in having this particular demon attached. Uh, this will keep him from living a very lonely life. Can you stay in touch with us and let us know? about it absolutely okay. oh my goodness i would love to yeah I'll keep you posted all right and your legs Thank are hot so feel how hot your legs are your legs are really hot feel that they are yeah everything is warm yeah yeah and so he's gonna feel that's what happens that's what healing energy is you'll feel that heat thing and so uh, but he's gonna feel really really warm and you'll notice he'll be very different okay oh that's wonderful thank you so much thank you Thank you so much. Okay. All right, Kathy. Have thanks. Have a great night. All right. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks, bye -bye. Kathy. And you can leave us feedback at uh, GarySpivey.com. Please. I will do that. Thank you again. This All is right. such a treat. Thank okay. you. Bye, Kathy. Bye. All
Bye-bye. And this was a particular demon uh, that you only get rid of one time. When I first met you years and years ago, uh, you had that particular demon. And I said, that I always say the wrong thing at the perfect time. To really make people things everything up. up. Right. And so, and I got rid of the demon. You stopped doing it. Tapping in with Gary Spivey, we'll be right back after this short message. Hey guys, how are you? Imagine yourself right here joining me at one of my spiritual retreats. This is what we do all the time. We run around in nature, uh, we check out the vibes, and out here you get in touch with your higher selves, your angels, so you too can live like a really lead and a heaven on earth vibe at your house. Uh, come and join me in one of my spiritual retreats. It's that time of year again. Time for Gary Spivey's North Carolina Spiritual Retreat at his home and spiritual retreat center and gardens. This experience will change your life forever. Sign up at GarySpivey.com or just call 1-800-827-4279 to reserve your spot now before it's all sold out. Now back to tapping in with Gary Spivey. Okay, here's an email, and I, I found this to be interesting because it's on the same lines of uh, what we are talking about. Okay, this is an email from Maria from Kansas City. Okay. It says, my, my six-year-old has behavior issues. It's usually a normal, happy, bright day. Right. But she has problems in school with following directions and dealing with other kids. Today, she was in the principal's office and told them that she hears voices in her head, and she is like half sun half moon trying okay. to figure out how to help her thanks uh, i see a particular dark energy around her that would be the cutting demon now this particular dark energy usually don't show up until little girls are about 13 years old 12 13 14 somewhere in there That's when they, start cutting their they start yeah they'll cut their wrists cut their arms their legs they'll write on their hands and so i i would bet you that this child is writing on her hands or on and the walls, on the walls, they'll do that sometimes. But anyway, I just got rid of uh, the cutting demon and the dark energies around her, and I think she'll calm down. This one particular dark energy will make a child really super aggressive, and uh, they'll the telltale sign is they'll write on their hands or they'll cut themselves. So I cleared that; she'll feel a lot better. I have a, uh, another Facebook question, and it's a uh, it's along the same lines as uh, you know children going through things, hearing things, seeing okay. things. Okay. All right. Um, Cynthia writes in and she says, I would like to know what my little grandson sees in his room. Okay. He keeps saying that, that the red dogs keep barking by his bedroom door and wake him up. Um, my mm -hmm. daughter tells him to tell his angels to tell these dogs to go away. And then it's okay for a while, but then it'll start back up again. Plus, I think he has seen angels. Is that true? Uh, now, when a child sees red-eyed demons or when a child will see uh, the red dogs or the red demons, these are dark energies uh, that make you have bad dreams. And they'll, they actually will attack a child or attack an adult. And so, and uh, they, but it, it gives you total night terrors. You'll feel like something's on you, attacking you. And so this poor child seeing something that I've seen uh, thousands of times, and uh, I just got rid of it. Now, see, in this situation, this is where you would want to teach your kids to meditate. Um, and his sister must be aware of angels because the sister's saying, ask your angels to help you get rid of the, you know, the red dogs, so to speak. Yeah. And so, but if you've got a child that's two years old or three years old or four years old, and they're talking about something so specific as a, a certain colored demon or, or demon dog, uh, then this is something that that is really occurring. And see, to me, that rings true. I know what that is. I got rid of it though. And uh, he'll sleep a lot better. That's good. That's interesting because in uh, religious art, I've seen pictures of angels slaying yes. What looks like a dog. Spiritually gifted children can see demons and can see angels. They need to learn to stay on the angel channel and ask their angels, ask God for spiritual gifts to get rid of the bad guys. And a lot of times you don't want to tell a child to get rid of the demon, you know, because that'll scare the child to talk about a demon. So you, you want to call them, I found bad guys is kind of a good term. You know, bad yeah, guys, get rid of the bad guys. Yeah. Tapping in with Gary Spivey will be right back after this short message. As we understand more about our kids, I believe we'll understand the whole universe. Could it be that today's kids are divinely created different? Could they have special gifts and talents that need to be explored? What's really going on inside their little heads? Is there a more deeper spiritual reason for their odd behavior? Just really, how accurate is the modern-day medical diagnosis of these kids with so-called disorders? Are we letting them down by not understanding them better? Could it be we have a hard time understanding them because we're not built like they are? 
What if their so-called disorders are not disorders at all? Could it be that they're a part of a bigger spiritual picture that's perfect in design in every way? And wouldn't this be impossible to understand if you weren't as spiritually gifted as they are? If you would like your child to be a part of Gary Spivey's up-and-coming Gifted Kids segment, call us at 1-800-827-GARY or send us an email by going to GarySpivey.com and fill out the Ask Gary a question box. Now, back to Tapping In with Gary Spivey. Hey, Maria, how are you? This is Travis with Tapping With Gary Spivey. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Yourself? Good. I have Gary Spivey on the line here with you, and uh, here he is. Hey, Maria, how are you? I'm doing great, Gary. How about yourself? I think I'm doing great, too. And so, what's your question? You had a question today? I do. Um, my parents got uh, broken into, let's see, back in January, I believe. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. And... I just wanted to see if this was something done with malice or if right. it was just uh, somebody who thought it was the wrong house. Well, I just see that someone uh, broke into another house down the street. So, they're, you know, it's, it's the same people that broke into both houses. And the people that broke into their house is a neighbor that li- lives on like a street over from where they, they are. And so uh, this was somebody that was kind of younger kids and uh, teenagers that I see breaking into quite a few houses. And so uh, they were just looking for things to steal they could sell. Because I don't see them coming back. Good, because you know? they have asked me to babysit my brothers, and I'm like deadbeat scared of going over there and staying there. <laughs> no, I don't see that happening. I see this was a, sort of a one-shot thing. I see them getting caught, and the way they get caught is because the other place they broke into, uh, they left a trail, so they get busted for that place. So... If you check uh, the police reports and find that there was another police report down the street the same night, uh, that's how you'll tie in and you may get some of your stuff back, okay? Perfect. Quick, quick question. They're going to Mexico. Okay. And I just want to make sure, are they going to be okay because they're driving? I see them going. I see them coming back. That's what I see. Uh, which one is nervous? One of them's a nervous, your mother, right? My mom. Oh, yeah. And she, she could like try not to be so uh, nervous because she worries so much. She sort of mojos. When I, when I go to clear the energy around the trip, uh, your mother's actually mojoing the trip with all of her worry. And so she's already made a big list of everything that could go wrong. And, uh, and so she worries so much. But I actually cleared all the dark energies away from her worry stuff. So tell her not to be such a worry wart, okay? I will do that. All right. So much, Gary. Thanks, honey. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? okay? All right, Gary, line one, we have Mary on the phone from Las Vegas. Okay. Hey, Mary, it's Gary Spivey. How Hi. are you? Now, you had a question. You were, you were, like, wondering where your life is. Now, when I look at you, I see you're really trying to make decisions, and it feels like whatever decision you make is not good enough. And, and the reason is because it looks like you're trying to basically bail out the Titanic with a teaspoon. And so, oh, yeah. yeah, in other words, like you've got a lot of bills, a lot of things going on. Are you, and you, do you have uh, two or you have three children? You have three children? I have three boys. Okay. And uh, they're rowdy, rowdy, and rowdier, right? Right. <laughs> I see all boys. And so, and so I think they keep you very, very busy. And when I read you, I just see, um, you know, that, that you, you're doing your best, but you wonder if your best is good enough. And I would just say that, that you don't probably get enough credit and, and people don't tell you how really good you are doing. I feel like you're going to get help from one of the boys' father. Who would that be? He doesn't help financially at all, and the other one's in jail. Okay. Well, that's what I thought, but I do see this is going to be a surprise uh, because one of the one of the fathers I see helping you financially, and this mm-hmm. will be in the, in a one lump sum chunk of money. Okay, and okay. and so and uh, that's going to make a big big difference. I think that's going to help you out. And then I see you moving. Are you planning a move? I just recently moved. Oh, good. Okay. Well, it feels like to me that this was a monumental because I see this move being monumental. Okay. And so mm-hmm. once you move and you just moved, okay, I see yep. everything kind of taking off in a different direction. I see you be- breaking ties with some people who were really wearing you down. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And so that's a mo- this is a very monumental move. I see things working out really good. Uh, next month, I see this chunk of money coming your way, and then I see you're off to the races. So it looks really good, okay? Okay, thank you. Honey, good luck with it all, okay? Thanks, Mary. Good Thanks. luck. Okay, Gary, I have an email from Amanda from Los Angeles, California. It says, I recently had a medium come to my house to do a cleansing, and she told me that my six-year-old son is the devil's prodigy. What? 
Yeah. Oh, and my God. she made Uh-oh. a deal Uh-oh. with the devil. That's you. You're the devil's prodigy, Travis. I already knew that. Though. Yeah, all right. Anyway. Right. And that she made a deal with the devil in what? order for the devil to release my son. She agreed to talk to him more, and the oh devil will gosh. only release my son until he is no longer in my care. What? And that there will be a lot of heartache because of my son in the future. Is this oh. true? Please help. I am a nervous wreck. Uh, a lot of times you'll have people that will try to scare you to death. Now, I talk about demons all the time. She's hustling up money. But she's hustling. Somebody's getting hustled because <laughs> that just don't sound right, you know, uh, to me. And it doesn't feel right to me. If you are a spiritually gifted person, uh, you work from light. You don't go make a deal with the devil. So I went over here and talked to Satan for a while. <laughs> he straightened everything out. <laughs> like everything's gonna be everything's gonna be fine now. It sounds like some crazy song. So so no, if, if someone says they're making a deal with the devil or you know working a root or you know killing a chicken or a goat or two, uh, all that stuff does exist. There's all there people do throw spells on people. They do exist, and uh, they're on I, the wrong team. But yeah, but they're on the wrong team. So I wouldn't go for that, and I, I think I wouldn't probably have the lady come over to my house uh but let me look at this poor uh, spawn of satan child that they're talking about <laughs> and i can actually i can clear his energy there he is when i when i look at him he has a very common uh thing and sometimes travis you have this where your head will be backwards on your body yes and what happens is this is when a person will astral project out when they sleep and when they come back into their body they'll be backwards in their body this will create uh, indifference. And so this right. child will be backwards, just like, you know, you could say yes, the child will say no, you can say no, the child will say yes. And so I just turned him around and I cleared a few dark energies away, but he's not a spawn of Satan's. And so, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, bull. <laughs> that's not true. Hey guys, don't go anywhere. Tapping in with Gary Spivey will be right back after this short message. Hey guys, if you want a private reading with me in person, just me and you, you can call me up at 800-827-GARY and schedule some time, and I'll talk to you about all your problems. Now, back to Tapping In with Gary Spivey. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us here in beautiful Ojai, California. Remember, this is a show, Tapping In with Gary Spivey, and it's a show that gives you spiritual solutions to your real-life problems. I'll see you next week. We leave you tonight with one final meditation, Meditating in Nature with Gary Spivey. So just a minute or two from the house with a walk down this path, there's this magical little waterfall and uh, uh, rock swimming hole. It's amazing, follow me. Tucked away down here is like one of the most magical spots I've found in Ojai. As you start to look upstream and look at the rocks behind me, uh, you'll start to feel a little bit of warmth in your head. Uh, This warmth that you feel in your head is the light of this energy vortex, which is one of the most powerful vortexes uh, on the west coast of of the USA. I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this week's edition of Tapping In with Gary Spivey. Please remember to share this with all your social media friends. I'll see you next week.